Hard Talk is on the road in Equatorial Guinea, a tiny oil-rich nation in West Africa. Thanks to the oil bonanza, this country has one of the fastest growing economies in all of Africa. But it's also rated one of the most corrupt and unequal countries on the planet. At the center of Equatorial Guinea's extraordinary story is President Teodoro Obiang. The question is, when will real change come to one of Africa's most notorious regimes? Hot, humid, and largely hidden from prying eyes. Equatorial Guinea is a nation of just three quarters of a million people, split between an island capital and a sparsely inhabited mainland. The president, Teodoro Obiang, styles himself as an African statesman, a father to his people. In reality, he, his family, and his ruling party have kept an iron grip on this country for 33 years. Foreign journalists are rarely granted visas. This is not a regime that invites scrutiny. During our visit, we were required to travel in a government minibus. Bernardo, the minder from the ministry, was a constant companion. This is the face Equatorial Guinea presents to visitors. The Sipopo Resort, a few kilometers along the coast from the capital Malabo, was built to host an African Union summit. It was President Obiang's chance to burnish his image. But now the convention center, the hotel and beach resort, the grand boulevards are all deserted. And most eerie of all, the empty villas built for Africa's 52 heads of state, a sprawling monument to presidential extravagance. This is the Equatorial Guinea outsiders rarely visit. More than half the population lives on a dollar a day or less. The UN reckons life expectancy is in the low 50s, and infant mortality is amongst the highest in Africa. Vous avez des enfants? In the country's second city, Bata, this man, a baker, told me of his daily reality. No piped water, weak electricity, and roads that are impassable when it rains. In Equatorial Guinea, fear permeates all discussion of politics. The Obiang regime has a grim record of suppressing opposition, which is why this young man insisted on anonymity before he would talk. All of your life, you have known only one president, that is President Obiang. What are your feelings about President Obiang? The people of Equatorial Guinea are suffering. Everything is very wrong here. All the oil money and the logging money is taken by the president's family. Other than party members, no one else is allowed to make money. Do people in this country know that the president and his family are worth tens, hundreds of millions of dollars? People here know what's happening, but no one can say anything. No one can put their hand up and say, this is bad. You just can't do that. It will be a mistake to do that, not like in a liberal democracy where people can say what they want. But if you do that, what happens? If you do, the secret police would come to arrest you. No one would know. Your family would not be able to find you. If you live alone, you would just disappear. Many people have disappeared. It sounds to me as though you feel very angry, but very powerless, helpless in this situation. I feel angry and I'm not alone. 
Sometimes us young people, we sit and discuss things. None of us can see any good in the things that are happening. Power here belongs to one family and one party. There have been attempts to overthrow President Obiang. The most infamous was led by British mercenary Simon Mann, backed by money from, among others, Mark Thatcher, son of Britain's former Prime Minister. Since that foiled coup in 2004, President Obiang has routinely labelled internal dissidents as coup plotters and agents of foreign powers. This man is currently Equatorial Guinea's only opposition MP. We met him outside the country to escape the attentions of the government's minders. Placido Mico, welcome to Hard Talk. You surely have one of the toughest political jobs in the world. Just how difficult is it to try to lead an opposition movement inside Equatorial Guinea? Es muy difícil porque el gobierno se opone eh, realmente a que se pueda hacer este trabajo porque quiere que predomine la dictadura y para hacer ese trabajo hay que estar dispuesto a enfrentarse al régimen a sufrir eh, a acciones eh, de represalias, eh, a sufrir eh, detenciones arbitrarias, encarcelamientos, marginación económica, social eh, del país. How big a factor is fear? I mean, you you know what prison is like in Equatorial Guinea. People see that and they think if they join the opposition, if they express discontent, they'll end up in prison. Pues es cierto que el miedo es uno de los elementos sobre los que descansa cualquier dictadura. Algunas personas um, que se han sumado a nuestra lucha por la democracia, por la libertad, por los derechos humanos, y tienen miedo, igual que yo. Were you tortured? Sí, sí, he sido torturado. El desprecio que tienen a los derechos fundamentales de la persona humana, a la dignidad humana, porque he visto cómo maltratan a, a personas como si fueran animales. Atarlos y colgarlos de los postes como cerdos, romperles las manos, eh, las piernas, eh, los pies, reventárselos eh, a base de golpes. Y he visto a gente morir de hambre eh, en la cárcel y de enfermedades pudiendo darles asistencia médica pero negarse, negando sola solamente porque los tienen que humillar y porque esa gente eh, se, eh, han cometido el pecado entre comillas de decir que el régimen eh, no funciona como debiera ser al servicio de la población. I, I suppose um, President Obiang's point would be that yes you were imprisoned, but he would say things have changed a great deal since then. You know, he's launched his 10-year program of reform. He says he is committed to transparency, to human rights, and to democracy in Equatorial Guinea. And you are now the official opposition MP in the parliament. He tolerates opposition. He says that right now, Equatorial Guinea is on a clear path to democracy. Creo que no no es cierto. Es decir, hemos retrocedido realmente porque el gobierno no ha seguido dando pasos para avanzar en la constitución de un estado de derecho eh, para que la democracia a, a, avance, da pasos. Todo lo contrario, el gobierno ha retrocedido y la gente así lo han sentido. Hay más miedo. Todavía. Pero una de las cosas que han influido en eso en los últimos 15 años ha sido la explotación del petróleo. Porque si antes eh, Obiang y su régimen tenían que dominar a la gente a través de la paliza 
la detención, la de tortura, con el advenimiento de la explotación del petróleo en grandes cantidades, eso ha puesto en manos del gobierno una cantidad de recursos que le han servido para utilizarlos como otra arma contra la democracia, contra eh, los derechos humanos, comprando conciencias, procurando que se tape ¿no? eh, lo que antes era más fácil de ver. Well, let me ask you this, though. If the investor nations, particularly the rich Western nations, took a different attitude to Obiang, to put, if they put real pressure on him and his government to respect human rights, to respect democratic freedoms... Los países democráticos um, <coughs> occidentales, uh, sobre todo, cuando aparecen intereses económicos claros como los derivados de la explotación del petróleo en Guinea Ecuatorial, eh, dejan de interesarse por eh, la falta de democracia, por las violaciones de los derechos humanos, incluso de la situación de subdesarrollo, de, de, de subdesarrollo eh, de, 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 del propio país. For all the criticism aimed at the Obiang regime, it does not face international isolation. China has moved in with massive infrastructure investment. Here we found a Chinese company laying electricity lines in the city of Bata. It's a very big project. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, but uh, I think uh, it, it, I think it's a very big project. But uh, we're gonna finish. It's true. How long? How long will it take? Maybe 2015. 2014, the whole job going to finish. How many Chinese workers are here on this one project? Uh, for now, maybe we have uh, 500, 600. What is the feeling of the local people towards you? Uh, most of them is friendship, friendly. But uh, uh, some, some guy, I don't know what they say. You mean you have a problem with some people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, everything is okay. We can keep going. We can go on. No problem. For you, as a Chinese citizen and a Chinese worker, uh -huh. it seems there are many opportunities right now in uh, Equatorial Guinea. Many jobs, a lot of work. It's a good place to come if you're Chinese. <laughs> yes, yes, it's true. Because uh, more and more Chinese gonna Come here. Payback for China comes in the form of access to precious raw materials. Like Equatorial Guinea's hardwood timber. Swathes of the country's rainforest are being cut down to satisfy China's insatiable demand. This vessel was preparing to take 30,000 tons of logs to Shanghai. This is what Equatorial Guinea's economy is all about, exploiting and exporting natural resources. The timber trade is worth hundreds of millions of dollars and it is no secret that much of the profit goes directly into the pockets of the ruling family. And it's no coincidence that for years, the president's son served as the Minister of Forestry, and his father gave him the rights to vast tracts of this country's woodland. It's the oil and gas business that has really transformed Equatorial Guinea's economy. The country is the third biggest producer in sub-Saharan Africa. This is the huge Punta Europa processing plant near the capital, Malabo. Here they produce almost four million tons of liquid natural gas a year. The vast majority of oil and gas production in Equatorial Guinea is done by American companies, and they funnel many millions of dollars a year 
into the coffers of the Obiang regime. What happens to that money? Well, that's a question now being asked by investigators working for the U.S. government. President Obiang's first son, Teodorin, is at the center of many of the allegations of corruption. Notorious for his playboy lifestyle and extravagant shopping habits, He's seen his Paris mansion and his fleet of luxury cars seized by the French authorities. The US government is also going after property, a private jet, even a $2 million collection of Michael Jackson memorabilia, all acquired with cash allegedly diverted from the state. Some of Equatorial Guinea's oil wealth is being spent at home, but on projects which raise questions about the president's priorities. This vast construction site carved out of the country's jungle interior is just one part of an ambitious multi-billion dollar plan to build a new capital city, Oyala. This has to be one of the most extraordinary construction projects I have ever seen. I'm on the roof of a 450 room, five star luxury hotel that comes complete with a full size theater, a convention center, and carved out of the jungle, an 18 hole championship golf course. Just down the road, a new university is taking shape. The plan is to make it the finest in Central and West Africa, a magnet for 8,000 students. But in a tiny country with a poor record in primary and secondary education, will reality ever match the ambition? Vicente Cabrera, welcome to Hard Talk. Thank you. How much from beginning to completion is this university project, let alone the whole city, but this university project going to cost? Well, uh, I'd say it's about a couple hundred million euros. To what extent is this project driven by the ambition, by the vision, the personal obsession of the president and his family? The president who's been here many times, uh, he's behind the project 100%. So he's really the one just driving the whole thing uh, on. This being one of the first projects uh, of the whole city, we are uh, a symbol of everything that's going to come. If we're honest about it, this is a massive vanity project for him, isn't it? If you think how, for example, how Brasilia was done, uh, I'm sure they said the same thing. Yeah, but, um, but Brazil has a population of 180 million or so. This country has maybe 700,000 yeah, people. Do they really need a university that could house 8,000 students? They've already got a university. They've got at least two universities. Yeah, you have to dream. And, and, and if you have the means, uh, why not? So why not drive the country forward and bring people from the neighboring countries here? The truth is that most people in this country do not even get a decent secondary education. So how yeah. can they possibly come to this state-of-the-art yeah. university? That maybe has to do uh, with, with the way uh, things are, are done in Africa in, in general. I think uh, uh, the priorities doesn't have to make any sense to us, but the, uh, but the results uh, are here. So maybe it's not in, they're not in the proper order uh, and they should do some other things first. Thanks to oil, President Obiang has access to vast wealth. Now he craves respect. He spent millions on international public relations. His record, he insists, stands up to scrutiny. President Teodoro Obiang, welcome to Hard Talk. Gracias. Mr. President, there are investigators 
and legal officials in the United States, in France, who have looked at the way in which the state finances have been handled in this country, and they have reached some very negative conclusions. Legal documents in the United States refer to, and this is a direct quote, an ongoing family criminal conspiracy, referring to you and your family and to your handling of the oil revenues in this country. How do you respond to that? Uh, le voy a decir claramente que uh, mi familia no está involucrado en los recursos petroleros. Aquí hay una gestión genuina. ¿Por qué? La, los recursos provenientes de petróleo se manejan mediante unas comisiones en el que está el Parlamento, está el Gobierno, que son los que deciden sobre los aspectos que hay que financiar. The French government has seized the Paris mansion, the artworks, the cars, and is seeking legal action against your son. Are you prepared to see your son go to Paris and defend himself and his finances in a court of law? Eh, le, el problema del proceso de París es un montaje político. ¿Por qué? Nosotros tenemos un acuerdo de protección recíproca de inversiones. Hay empresas francesas que tienen sus inversiones en Guinea Ecuatorial. Un ciudadano de Guinea Ecuatorial, como mi hijo, invierte en el París, en, en, en Francia, pero Francia no tiene derecho a incautar sus bienes, porque eso es una violación de los acuerdos firmados. Porque ellos empiezan acusando de que son bienes mal adquiridos, pero no han mandado una comisión que venga a examinar a la persona que denuncian en el país. Por eso digo que es un montaje político. Leave aside France. What do you say to the people in your own country? And I have spoken to some of them who say that you and your family have stolen, stolen the resources and the assets that rightfully belong to all of the people of this country not just to you. Bueno, yo creo que esa es una información falsa. Porque al contrario, lo que mi gobierno ha hecho en este país es elevar el nivel de vida, no solamente de la población, incluso de infraestructura. Todo eso no sale de, del exterior, sino son de los recursos del país que estamos invirtiendo en este país para que este país sea un país emergente. I have been very struck as I've traveled around your country. The number of infrastructure projects, building projects, which are being run and financed by Chinese companies and the state of China. Bueno, yo hago una vida política realista. Donde a mí me dan, ahí voy. Me voy a China porque China me ha dado un préstamo de 2.000 millones que otro no me ha dado. Se dice vulgarmente obras son amores y no buenas razones. ¿Por qué voy a negar la política china? Ahora, nosotros no tenemos nada que ver si China nos ayuda económicamente y no se entremezcla los problemas políticos. Es su política. No soy el que dice que está bien. A final question, Mr. President. You are already one of the longest serving uh, leaders in the world today. But I also wonder how long you want personally to carry on. Bueno, el, el hecho de que yo esté en el poder no depende de mi voluntad popular, de, 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 mi, de mi decisión. Depende de la voluntad popular. ¿Por qué? Trabajamos por el pueblo, pero tampoco no podemos defraudar al pueblo cuando el pueblo desea algo.
In the heart of the jungle, they've laid out the wide avenues that will be the arteries of Equatorial Guinea's new capital, if it ever gets finished. Oil wealth means the president can indulge his whims, and for now, it means his people are powerless to stop him. <laughs> 